In October 2006, tragedy descended upon nickel mines in Pennsylvania. A man walked into a school and after keeping ten young girls captives, he shot eight of them and killed five. When the journalists asked the Amish community to comment about what had just happened, the words that came from the whole community was that we forgive this man. Fast forward nine years in Charleston, Carolina, and there are these African Americans worshipping in their own church and a white man breaks in and starts shooting and killing people. A time comes when the daughter of one of the victims gets to speak to this murderer of her mother. And in tears, with tears in her eyes, she looks at the murderer and she says, I forgive you. In our Catholic tradition, we are well aware of the frequent call of God to forgive our enemies. Even Jesus himself on the cross forgave those who tortured and crucified him. In the Lord's Prayer, we're challenged to receive God's forgiveness and in turn offer forgiveness to ourselves and to those who have hurt us. This challenge can be so hard, so hard to forgive those who have hurt us, particularly if we have been hurt badly. Here are four steps to forgiving those who have hurt us. Forgiving someone does not mean defeat, doesn't make the person you are forgiving right. Mahatma Gandhi said that holding on to a lack of forgiveness, holding on to grudges is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. God desires us to forgive because he knows it sets us free. He knows it liberates us to become more like him who forgave us upon the cross. The second thing about forgiveness is that it is not a feeling, but it is a decision. Forgiveness is a voluntary process whereby we let go of grudges, where we let go of vengefulness and this feeling of hate, where we choose to wish the other person well, even though they have hurt us. It's a decision we sometimes have to make, not once, but every time we see that person, every time we think of the person. But in making this decision to wish the other well, making this decision to love the other person, even though they don't show us love, that is where we find freedom in forgiveness. The third thing is to recognize that we too are in need of mercy. St. Paul says in Romans 3 that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God continues to offer us love and mercy and forgiveness. And we, as Christians, are to do the same. The fourth thing is that forgiving is not forgetting. Forgiveness does not disqualify you from wisdom. You need to learn from the past and use the past, the wisdom of the past, to grow in love and charity towards others. Protect your heart, protect your mind, protect who you are, that you may grow in holiness and in the love of God. <laughs> Matthew 6, 14, 15 says, For if you forgive those who have sinned against you, then your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your heavenly Father will not forgive your sins. Mm -hmm.